So hi everyone, thank you for logging in uh, to this webinar whose topic uh, concerns uh, additive manufacturing. Uh, so I'm Didi Boisselier uh, and I work at Thierry Palaiser uh, as an expert in the field of additive uh, manufacturing. Uh, Next slide. So, uh, my presentation we start with a short uh, introduction about uh, IREPA laser. Uh, then uh, we will see the main development uh, in additive manufacturing at uh, IREPA laser. Then I will uh, review the numerous uh, hybrid processes uh, in additive manufacturing. I will demonstrate uh, the benefits uh, of hybrid uh, AM through three examples before to, to conclude uh, the presentation and, and the webinar, of course. So, <clears throat> before to start uh, with uh, hybridization, uh, I just would like to, to say a few words about IREPA Laser. So IREPA Laser is a company of research and development in the field of industrial laser uh, processes. So we develop innovative laser manufacturing solutions for the industry and we assist uh, industry in their operational implantation on site. We do research and development in laser welding, additive manufacturing, micro machining also, surface functionalization, mainly with ultra short pulse femtosecond laser. We have also an important activity for training uh, and we train and we teach uh, more than 600 people each year, uh, people coming from, uh, from industry, mainly from, from the French uh, industry. At Thierry Palaiser, we have a long uh, experience, um, a strong experience also, in the field uh, of laser cladding. We have developed uh, a coaxial nozzle, some uh, some years ago, a coaxial nozzle which uh, has been patented in 1994. And uh, we have optimized uh, the, the nozzle in order to, to be able to um, uh, make a, a DED, so directed energy deposition. So we melt uh, powders and uh, layer after layer, we are able to uh, manufacture a part. So we have different uh, kind of nozzle and uh, we have also developed machines. Uh, we, uh, we work with different uh, software, mainly uh, NX from uh, Siemens. Uh, and we have founded a company uh, eight years ago. Uh, the name of the company is Beam. Uh, Beam uh, now in, has been uh, taken over by Adup. Uh, and uh, we'll sell uh, the, the technology that was developed uh, initially by uh, IREPA Laser. So what is interest of such kind of technology? In fact, we start with metal powder grains, uh, which are melted and deposited using uh, our process. The name of the process is CLAD, it's DED CLAD. And, uh, uh, with the process, this process, um, we are able to repair worn or damaged parts, like uh, this part, uh, which is uh, uh, a part of our uh, engine of uh, an airplane. It was a part for uh, Pratt & Whitney in the US. So we have developed um, the, the repair of such, such kind of part, um, but we can also use a process in order to add new features 
on existing uh, value parts like uh, like this one. We can also use uh, the, the process, the declared process, in order to manufacture functional parts. And uh, last uh, application uh, of the process is the manufacturing of preform to be machined afterward. And um, by this way, we can reduce uh, uh, the amount of chips uh, and uh, the waste uh, of, of material by making, uh, by manufacturing a part uh, very close to uh, the, uh, the final uh, size, final dimension. So the aim of my talk uh, is uh, hybridization. But um, the question is, uh, what is hybridization? In fact, uh, hybridization uh, is a kind uh, of Swiss Army knife. In fact, it's a combination of manufacturing processes in the same machine, uh, or it's a combination of different additive manufacturing processes for the manufacturing of parts. So two, two kinds of, uh, uh, of setup uh, for hybrid uh, process. So why is it so interesting to combine the processes? In fact, uh, by uh, combining processes, uh, we can uh, exploit the best of each process at the right time. We can push, we can extend the limitation of each, each process in order to get new materials, for example, by mixing uh, different powders, uh, like uh, functioning gradient materials, FGM. We can also get a new design, new solutions with better material use, less energy, and a uh, shorter uh, lead time. So there are many examples uh, uh, on the market uh, of DED plus machining, PBF, so PBF is a powder bed fusion plus machining, but we can also find uh, uh, other uh, additive manufacturing processes plus machining, and we can also couple, combinate uh, different uh, AM processes on the same part. So I will start now with a review about uh, uh, the different example of uh, hybrid machine, hybrid processes. As a good and first example of uh, hybridization, there is a coupling of DED with machining. We find uh, different suppliers on the market, um, uh, like DMG Moi, uh, the, the well, uh, the best known uh, supplier, Mazak, Optomec, uh, Tongtai, Hamuel, so a lot of uh, machine suppliers, and they have combined DED and machining uh, within the same machine. Uh, what is interest? In fact, um, the main interest uh, is to machine during DED manufacturing. So by this way, it's possible to machine and reachable uh, uh, part of, of the final part. So we can machine internal surfaces. It's, it's really interesting, but uh, uh, we don't have to forget uh, that uh, very often the part need a, a heat treatment uh, or stress relief in order to, uh, to relieve the stress uh, and to uh, minimize the distortion. But we can have some distortion of the part, and uh, if the part uh, is already a machine, we can uh, have to, uh, to, to remachine the, the part. And uh, um, even during uh, machining, even during manufacturing, uh, we can have uh, some stress relief with uh, movement displacement uh, uh, of the part uh, uh, through, uh, through machining. Um, the supplier, uh, Mazak, uh, which is a Japanese uh, company, has published the results of a study with a comparison of hybrid AM and complete complete milling 
on this uh, demo part. Uh, this demo part is made of Inconel, uh, of features in Inconel 718 uh, added on a tube on a cylinder in the Steinmetz T360. So, uh, what are the, the results uh, which were published by uh, Mazak? Um, in fact, um, concerning the, the manufacturing time, uh, manufacturing time is very similar between the, the two processes. But uh, there is a cost and material reduction. As you can see on this, uh, this table, um, if we start uh, with a block of Inconel 718, uh, we need uh, 90 ki kilograms of Inconel uh, 718. It's, it's a very high, it's very expensive, very high cost. And uh, in fact, this part um, is made uh, of the combination of two different materials. So in this case, we start with a tube of 50 kilograms uh, of uh, stainless steel, uh, and uh, uh, they have uh, uh, put added uh, features uh, uh, with powders, uh, with inconel powder, uh, with less than 10 kilograms of uh, inconel powder. And so the, the cost is very different uh, uh, compared to uh, uh, full uh, machining uh, in a block of metal. Uh, they, they have proved, they have demonstrated also that the mechanical resistance uh, at the interface, interface between uh, uh, stainless steel and inconel uh, is better than uh, the stainless steel. Uh, so we, there is no defect in the interface or in, in the boundary uh, between uh, uh, the cylinder and the, and the feature. So there is also a big interest if there is a combination of different materials and if it's possible, of course, to, uh, to, to apply uh, the different materials. So, um, next uh, example of uh, hybrid uh, uh, process, uh, it's PBF plus machining. In this case, uh, there is a combination of PBF and high speed milling uh, within the same machine. So, two suppliers have implemented uh, uh, high speed milling uh, in a PBF machine. Matsuura and Sodic, uh, to, to my knowledge. And um, <clears throat> in this case, um, they, so they, they, they mill the part uh, during manufacturing. And uh, the, after a few melted layers, in the order of 10 layers of melted uh, uh, material, of melted uh, metal for Matsuura, the milling is started, and they mean only uh, the, the contour uh, of the melted layer. The main interest uh, is to be able to machine and finish the surfaces within the part, like uh, molds with internal cooling channel. So in this case, the uh, internal cooling channels are, uh, are machined during manufacturing, and uh, they get a very, uh, very good uh, surfaces uh, inside. So interest, uh, high quality surface uh, finish, ability to make complex internal shapes uh, with mid surface, and they can uh, reduce the lead time for molds. Uh, seems to be curious, but uh, in fact, if you compare um, manufacturing, uh, the typical manufacturing, uh, uh, of molds uh, with uh, this process. Uh, in fact, in one process, I can uh, have uh, the uh, whole mold. Uh, constraints are very low build up rates uh, due to uh, the combination of the two processes. And some other processes uh, plus machining um, uh, we can find on the market uh, uh, the the process of Hermley, it's a German uh, manufacturer. Uh, they propose to combine uh, a thermal spray process, uh, which is called MPA, plus milling. You can see the, the picture here. There is also Fabrisonic, uh, uh, with uh, ultrasound uh, 
uh, welding uh, additive manufacturing plus meaning. There is a picture here. And uh, I would like uh, also to show an interesting development uh, of a French colleague uh, of Manutech uh, in Saint Etienne in France. So they have patented a process uh, with a combination of a femtosecond laser with PBF. In fact, uh, they cut the contour of the melted layer with a femtosecond laser, uh, layer by layer, and by this way, they can reduce the roughness of the edge. You can see on the picture here, the roughness after femtosecond cutting, uh, roughness, uh, roughness of uh, six uh, micrometer compared to the, the roughness uh, of more than 15 uh, micrometers. Interesting. So we will see in the future how they can implement uh, this uh, this process uh, in an industrial machine. So, we can combine uh, an uh, additive manufacturing process with machining in the same machine, but we can also combine different AM processes on the same part. I would like to show now how we can combine DED and PBF on the same part in an efficient way. First, we know the advantages and constraints of DED laser powder, what we call in our case DED clad. So the advantages are no size limit, or the main, uh, the main pro are no size limitation. Uh, the fact that we can add uh, functionalities on existing part, uh, we have a very large range of powder uh, material and we have also hybrid prey. But there are some constraints, uh, some uh, uh, like a complex geometry, which are not uh, feasible with this process. We are not able to make a close volumes. Uh, we have a limited accuracy and uh, uh, the process uh, uh, has not uh, reached uh, today his uh, industrial uh, maturity. Of course, uh, we can compare the, the CLAD uh, with, uh, with PBF. We know the pro and the con of, uh, of PBS, PBF. And uh, in this case, we can see that uh, many advantages of one are constraints uh, for the other and vice versa. Like uh, no size limitation, and it's a limitation for PBF. The fact that we can add uh, functionalities on the existing part, uh, it's not possible with PBF. We have a hybrid operator, uh, is not today the case uh, with, uh, uh, with PBF, but with PBF, we can make uh, complex geometries, which is not possible, which are not possible with DED CAD. We can uh, have a very high accuracy, which is not the case uh, with the DED CAD. So you can see that uh, there is uh, something and, uh, and uh, uh, so something is an advantage and something is a constraint for, for, for the other process. So by using this, we can uh, combine the process in order uh, to, uh, to take benefit uh, uh, of each process uh, on the same part. So let's now it's illustrate what has just been said with the first example which combine a larger scale part and a complex uh, geometry. So my first, my first example deals with manufacturing of a Trump hair mixer made of a soup part uh, in red on the picture with two tubes and a Trump. The soup part in red with two tubes is a complex part because uh, uh, this tube uh, go inside uh, the, the other one and uh, becomes uh, coaxial to, 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 to the first one, to, to the big one. This part uh, cannot be made 
uh, by the, the, uh, the, the clan. But uh, the part uh, has a length of uh, more than 700 uh, millimeters and is not feasible with PBF, with a classical machine, uh, PBF machine. So a solution is to use a, a hybrid process to start with uh, the sub part, uh, which is complex, and this sub part is made by PBF, and to add on this sub part uh, the trunk, uh, thanks to uh, the DECLAD, in order to get uh, uh, this part, as you can see. So the material in this case is, um, is uh, a kind of inconel, nickel-based uh, alloy, with a thickness for the trump of 0.8 millimeters and a total manufacturing time of uh, less than uh, four uh, hours. So main hybridization interest uh, on this part uh, is a coupling of large part and complex geometry. So let me now present a, a second example. And this second example deals uh, with, uh, with a study of a demo part, uh, which will show the main criteria for the choice of a uh, hybrid solution. The main driver for the choice of a um, hybrid DDPBF solution seems to be the association of a complex uh, and large scale part. But if the part is not so complex, is it interesting uh, to couple the two AM processes? Are there other uh, selection criteria? Can we reduce the code, the lead time, uh, and so on? This is what I would like to show you now. For this study, I consider this demo part. It's not a complex part, but the size is very close to the maximum size of standard machines on the market. So it's a housing with, uh, with two flanges with diameter of uh, 240 millimeters, height of 250 millimeters. All the surfaces have to be machined. Uh, we need only one prototype in this case. So I have studied five manufacturing cases, and I would like also to thank uh, some partners um, who have contributed uh, to this study and for whose uh, you find their name uh, below. So same for, for, <clears throat> for them. So we have studied uh, five manufacturing uh, case studies, uh, casting, bulk machining, PBF only, DED clad only, and a hybrid process, PBF plus DED clad. So the first case is um, bulk machining. So the full, uh, machining of the part. The part has no complex shape. It can be easily machined, but we need a metal block of uh, 105 kilogram of Inconel 718. Is it maybe like uh, the, the case of Mazak, uh, which was published? So in this case, um, uh, 105 kilograms of Inconel 718 uh, needs uh, maybe uh, one or two weeks uh, if uh, the material is uh, on stock, but the chance to, to, to find only one block uh, of this material on stock, uh, uh, the chances are very weak. So uh, we need uh, some months in order to get uh, uh, this material. Uh, four materials, so between two weeks and four months. And the machining time is uh, roughly uh, 15 hours with more than 90% of, uh, of chips of lost material. 
is not a, a good thing for sustainable growth. Second solution is uh, casting. Uh, it's not a big part, and with some modification of the geometry, the part can, can be casted. But our partner has explained that its casting production needs at least 400 kilograms of molten metal. If we want only one part, there would be a large waste of materials. And uh, uh, our partner needs uh, 12 weeks for the first part. So it seems to be interesting, but uh, not only uh, for one, one part, because in this case, uh, they will, be, they will uh, make uh, uh, several parts. Uh, next uh, case um, is a wound part um, by PDF. So uh, this solution, uh, uh, in this solution, we need to use support for the overhanging flanges, which increase the processing time. So we have made, uh, uh, you can see here, the, the support uh, in order to get uh, the final part. Um, with our partner, we have made uh, different studies with different machines. An uh, old machine, uh, uh, which need uh, 19 days and 20 hours in order to get a part. Uh, a more recent machine uh, with only one laser, which uh, need uh, 165 hours, and uh, another machine with two lasers and uh, 84 uh, hours. Next uh, solution will be uh, the wound part uh, preformed by DD CAD. So, of course, the part has been modified in order to simplify uh, the internal geometry, which will be obtained uh, by uh, machining. Manufacturing in two steps. First, uh, uh, the modified uh, cylinder followed by the flanges in a different configuration, as you can see on this uh, drawing. In this case, uh, the first uh, cylinder needs uh, three, uh, oh, 30 hours uh, for three liters of material, and the second step, uh, we need only four hours for uh, 300, a cubic centimeter. And the last case uh, is a hybrid process. So the combina combination of, uh, uh, of PDF and the DCAD. So in this case, uh, we start uh, with a simple, uh, simple cylinder uh, and uh, we finish the cylinder with a flange with a DCAD. So again, we made the study with different mm -hmm. configuration of, uh, of machine, uh, of PBF machine. In this case, again, we, we can see uh, four hours for the, the flanges. So what are the conclusion of these case studies? I have compared the different processes, A, B, C, D, E, as uh, presented before. You can find here uh, the manufacturing time for PBF and uh, DD CAD, uh, the cost for uh, and uh, the, delay, uh, the delivery time uh, for uh, uh, the, the first uh, machining, post processing, tooling machining, control, and global and the global uh, delivery time, shipment uh, included, and the final cost for uh, all processes. So first, um, machining is cheaper if material is on stock and with material easy to machine. But uh, there, is, there are very little chance uh, to, to find in our stock. So in this case, if we need uh, the material, the metal block uh, on demand, uh, the, the lead time will be uh, increased and, uh, and the cost 
tout. Euh, casting is an interesting solution, but uh, with a large amount of lost material and a long delivery time of, uh, in this case, uh, 88 uh, days. If we want to make more than one part, uh, casting is certainly the best solution. The best solution with uh, a good balance between cost and uh, delivery time uh, is a hybrid process, as you can see. Of course, it will depend mainly on the performances of the PBF machine for the processing time, and the, which is the main part uh, of the cost. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, the shorter delivery time uh, will be obtained uh, with the whole part in DD CLAD, but this is not the best choice uh, for, for the cost. So, as you can see, hybrid process will uh, uh, give uh, the, the best solution. And I made also the same study with a larger part, uh, with a diameter of uh, 340 millimeters, only with PBF and DD CAD. And we can observe uh, again uh, that uh, uh, the higher cost saving is when we had a simple overhanging uh, subpart. In fact, uh, with this diameter, the flange is very big and we need a lot of supports in order to support uh, the, the, the flange. And this increases a lot uh, the manufacturing time. And uh, so we, we get a higher cost. So, and the shorter delivery time uh, for simple parts we need the cloud pre for manufacturing is uh, eight days in, in this case, again. So again, we can see uh, that the hybrid uh, uh, solution uh, gives the, the best, uh, the best results. So, let me now uh, conclude, uh, make the, the first conclusion uh, with an application uh, of this uh, concept on an um, industrial part. It's a real industrial part in this case. So this part uh, is a sleeve uh, with internal chamber and blowing nozzle. So you can see the picture of the, of the part. And here you have the internal chamber. And here you can see the blowing nozzle. You can see here the blow nozzle. So it's a complex part because we have an internal chamber and there is no process able to make uh, this part uh, except uh, uh, additive manufacturing and mainly uh, PBF. But the part uh, is, a, is a very, uh, very big part uh, with a weight uh, of 27 kilograms. Again, the material is in Connell 718. We need only one part, but there are uh, four different parts with different geometries, but we need only one part of each uh, geometry. Uh, for the machining, uh, we just have to machine uh, the surfaces of the flanges and also the, the bosses. And there is a special requirement. Uh, we need a high quality roughness inside uh, the blowing nozzles. So in this case, again, a hybrid process. Uh, we have combined a PBF preform and the rest by the DCAD. So we can see here the PBF preform with a volume of uh, two, uh, 2,500 cubic centimeter, which need need, uh, uh, which has needed uh, 260 hours uh, with uh, two lasers and um, uh, DED clad. So we have just added uh, the flanges, uh, buses, and the two start of the tubes here with a volume of two liters or 2,400 cubic centimeter 
which has needed only uh, less than 10 hours of processing time. So we can see uh, the manufacturing uh, process on this, uh, this slide. We have manufactured the flange with two millimeters of hole thickness. It's interesting to observe that in this case, um, uh, there are two stress relief during the processing chain. So in fact, here you have uh, the first step uh, with a preform obtained by uh, PBF with uh, some samples in order to, uh, to be able to, uh, uh, to analyze uh, the, the quality of the, of the material, of the remelted material. Heat treatment in order to relieve the, the stresses before to, to extract the part for, for, from the, the plate, the support plate. After in the machine, we have added the flanges, uh, the tube, the buses. So we can see the, the final part uh, uh, added. And uh, again, new heat treatment in order to relieve the stresses before to machine it uh, uh, and to, to get the, the final part. So, for my conclusion, <clears throat> I would like to say that uh, we, uh, I, I have presented various examples of processes of hybridization. So I have made a, a short review of, um, of the machine that we can find on the market um, with uh, numerous technology uh, which couple AEM processes and machining in one machine. But we have seen also the combination of, uh, uh, of PBF and DUD CLAD uh, with a large part of the, the tube air mixer, a large part and complex part. Uh, uh, we, uh, so I have presented also some drives from some uh, criteria of selection for DD clad uh, and PBF uh, hybrid process. And uh, the drivers are not only the size, but uh, uh, can be also uh, the cost uh, and the, the lead time. Moreover, high interest, uh, uh, there is a high interest uh, if uh, we can combine uh, different materials uh, on the same part. And concerning uh, the st sustainable growth, uh, hybridization allows a better use of material with less waste uh, on this kind of, uh, of part. So thank you for your attention and uh, I'm ready for uh, some uh, some questions. Oh, I see that <clears throat> uh, I have to. You, you can ask a question uh, through the the QR uh, channel. Uh, on this uh, on this webinar, if you um, uh, if you click on, on QR, uh, you can uh, write uh, your your question. I have two um, already two two questions. Um, the first one um, uh, concerns the quality of the interface between the PBF part and the DD part. So it's clear that the quality of the interface uh, between the PBF part and and the DD part, uh, DD uh, uh, deposition uh, is uh, very important. It's clear that the process parameters uh, uh, of the first layers uh, have to be uh, optimized uh, in order to get a perfect metallurgical uh, continuity with no defect, with no lack of fusion, for example. Mazak. Uh, the company Mazak uh, has demonstrated 
had proved that uh, the tensile sample, uh, which was extracted um, uh, in the interface between uh, uh, between the, the stainless steel tube and the, the DED uh, and the deposition, so the tensile sample has broken in the stainless steel 316 uh, part and not in the in the liaison uh, between the tube and the feature. And uh, in some uh, previous uh, study, we have also demonstrated uh, the, the same uh, results. I hope that uh, this response uh, will, uh, uh, will um, <clears throat> give you uh, what, uh, what was expected. Uh, uh, th there is uh, another question also. Uh, what about the distortion induced uh, by DED uh, on the PDF part? Uh, yes, it, um, it's a very good question because uh, it's important to take uh, the stress, uh, the stress induced by uh, DED deposition uh, into account. Uh, so first, the PBF part has to be stress relieved before DED uh, in order to, to reduce or to cancel uh, the, the, the stress in, in the part. Um, secondly, it's better uh, to have a, a sufficient over sickness uh, of the part. Uh, uh, in order to, to limit uh, the effect uh, of, of the distortion. So the feasibility of hybrid process uh, will depend on geometry, um, uh, will depend of the geometry of, of the part uh, and on the mass uh, of material to be deposited uh, uh, and the mass also of the, of the PBF part, uh, which uh, will uh, receive uh, the, the deposition. Um, <clears throat> there's a question. Um, thank you for, for asking. Is there any investigation on hybrid uh, uh, PTA plus DD yet? Uh, hybrid PTA. So I think it's. Uh, uh, I, I'm not sure. Is it plasma? Uh, plasma um, projection. I, I'm not sure with PTA. I think it's, it's plasma deposition. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I hope so. So I will make uh, the the response with uh, with plasma the, the deposition. Uh, I don't know. I don't know to, today uh, if there are uh, some um, uh, studies uh, or application of hybrid uh, PTA uh, plus uh, the yet, uh, but maybe. Uh, I think this is the same uh, with uh, one and uh, and DD, DD clad. With one, uh, we are able to make a very big part. Uh, uh, with a very hybrid operator and mm -hmm. with um, with DD, uh, ah, okay, uh, PTA is plasma transfer arc. Okay, uh, thank you. So it was a um, plasma uh, plasma deposition. So I don't know. I, I don't know if there are some uh, some examples, uh, some application of uh, of both processes of the combination of both processes. But uh, why not? Uh, why not? Um, even if the both processes uh, are very close uh, uh, concerning the, the results and the, the quality and also the, the accuracy of the position, I think it's more interesting when uh, the, the both processes uh, give a very uh, different uh, um, uh, characteristics uh, of uh, of the position, uh, different uh, accuracies. Uh, one is accurate, uh, the other one uh, one accurate but uh, with a low predator rate, and the other one 
less accurate uh, but with a higher minimum rate. Next question, uh, how many pieces did you make before an acceptable uh, result? Um, <laughs> um, <clears throat> it's clear that um, uh, if um, I take uh, for the, 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 the last example of the, the real uh, industrial part, uh, it was not possible to, to make uh, uh, a test uh, because uh, um, the cost of, of the part uh, was uh, was between uh, 10 and um, 20 thousand uh, euros so it was not possible to to make tests uh, so what uh, what we did uh, we we made um, uh, some uh, samples in order to uh, 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 some samples uh, during manufacturing in order to, to be able to, to analyze uh, the quality of, uh, of the PPF part uh, and to make uh, some some test uh, of deposition before to uh, to make uh, the final deposition uh, of the flanges uh, on the on the PPF part. Uh, <clears throat> So it, and clearly uh, we uh, we we put a, a large uh, maybe for the first part we we put a large over thickness in order to be sure that uh, even with uh, some distortion uh, after machining we will get uh, the the expected uh, dimension. Uh, next <laughs> question. Um, is it possible to get uh, this presentation? Um, yes, uh, this is uh, the, the final. Um, this is the final uh, slide. Um, in fact, um, um, you can find uh, the, the content of, of my presentation. Uh, and the video on of the webinar uh, on the Irepa Laser YouTube channel, uh, and you can find uh, the, the, the YouTube Irepa Laser YouTube channel also on our website. Website uh, is uh, Irepa uh, minus Laser uh, dot com. Uh, next uh, uh, question. Have you studied uh, the optimization of the parts and supports before machining them? And what about uh, the heat treatment? Okay. Um, no, we, we have not studied the optimization of the part or support before machining them. Uh, you are right. Uh, uh, mainly for, for the first part, uh, with some modification uh, of the part, uh, maybe. Uh, um, it was not necessary to, to use support, um, but um, um, our uh, subcontractor for, for PBF uh, uh, manufacturing uh, uh, has preferred to, to make support in order to be sure to, uh, to get uh, the, the final part uh, because it was a, a big part uh, with uh, 27 kilograms, uh, 200 millimeters and 50 uh, of height. And uh, in this case, um, he has preferred to, to, to do the support. But uh, for the second uh, PDF uh, part uh, with a diameter of 340 millimeters, uh, it's clear that the flange uh, needs uh, need support uh, from, from the, the beginning. And what about the heat treatment? Uh, uh, concerning the heat treatment, uh, uh, we uh, in this case uh, the part um, for, for 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 the final part of the the real industrial part, uh, we uh, it, it was not uh, necessary to to get um, uh, heat treatment of the Inconel 718. Just uh, uh, a stress relief uh, was uh, sufficient. So in this case, we we have just uh, apply. Uh, uh, stress relief uh, heat treatment. So, 
that was uh, the final question. Uh, again, uh, thank you for attending my webinar, uh, for buying so many uh, uh, to, uh, to my webinar. So again, you can find uh, the, the content, the video on the Irepa Laser uh, YouTube channel. And uh, we look forward to seeing you on December uh, 14th uh, for an upcoming webinar on laser safety with my colleague, uh, Franck Rigolet. Thank you for listening and uh, see you soon. <laughs>